Bonjour mes enfants. Welcome to French Made Easy with me Rakhi Sachdev. Today we are going to tackle the ICIC Semester 2 French uh, Second Language Paper. Uh, the question that we are going to talk about and learn how to ace is the picture composition. Now the picture composition is one of the five options of question number one. Question number one will carry five options of which you have you have to write an essay or a redaction on different topics. And the last topic, last uh, question, last option would be a picture composition. Now, the picture composition, in my opinion, is the easiest option to take, uh, primarily because it needs to be answered in the present tense and it requires using a lot of adjectives, which is very well in the scope of even the most average of students. So, we are going to learn how to ace the picture composition. Now let's get on to the steps that we need to take to start writing a picture composition. So the first step and the most important is observation. Observe the picture carefully. Spend a minute or two looking at the picture and note down, make a rough note on the four W's. Now you may ask what are the four W's? Well, that is what? What does it show? What does the picture show? Where does the scene occur? What is what the picture that is showing? Where is where, where, where does it take place? Is it on the beach? Is it in the house? Is it in the mountainside? Etc. So you need to know the location. Note down the location where the scene is taking place. When does it occur? Which season is it? You can make that out from the clothes that the people are wearing or from the uh, background etc and most important who all are there in the picture so these four w's you need to observe and make a rough note of it in your uh, on a rough uh, in your rough section or in the question paper itself on the side make a note of the what the when the where and the who now let's start with our first paragraph the first paragraph needs to use the following Key phrases. Set image illustre. So, what does this mean? It means this picture illustrates or shows. Set image montre. This picture shows. Set une image qui montre. This is a picture which shows or that shows. Et sur cette image donnée, on peut voir. In this picture, in this given picture, one can see. Now, how are we going to continue with the sentence, whatever we've chosen? For example, let's say we've chosen um, set image mantra and the picture is that of a park. So, we start off by saying set image mantra un jardin ou set, mon, set image mantra un park. Or we can even can, or say something like this, sur set image donné, on peut voir un jardin. And then we go on to describing it in detail. Où se passe la scène? Now we come to the second W, where. Where does the scene take place? Now to answer this part, we need to use the phrase la scène se passe. La scène se passe, c'est-à-dire the scene takes place or it occurs. Now where does it occur? We have to observe the uh, picture carefully and understand and write down uh, different prepositions to describe it. For example, if it takes place in a urban setting, then you will say dans un milieu urbain. If it's in a crowded street, dans une rue bondée. Uh, in in the open air, outside, you will say en plein air. La scène se passe en plein air. Um, à la campagne, or that is at the countryside. À la plage, at the beach, devant, en face de, à côté de, are some of the other prepositions that you can use. So what you need to do is observe the picture carefully, understand why, where is it located, and then use it along with the key phrase, la scène se passe, and then followed by the preposition that you want to use. Now we're going to learn how to describe the background. The picture that you're going to be seeing in your papers, uh, learn to divide it up in your mind into two sections, the background and the foreground. 
So when we are going to describe the background, we need to use the key phrase uh, la rière plan on peut voir. I repeat, à l'arrière plan, on peut voir, means in the background, one can see. And then what do you see? Normally the picture would have a background of part of the sky or something like that. So you need to use, uh, mention, you can even mention the weather here. If you see that there is, it, it just shows clear sky, so you can say il fait beau or you see a cloud or two, then uh, definitely you have to describe it because you can physically see it. So, il y a des nuages. And then from there, you can draw a conclusion by saying, il fait beau. Or uh, if it's clear skies, il fait chaud. Uh, you can also use uh, all the other weather-related vocabulary by looking at the picture, observing the clothes that the people in the picture are wearing. From that also, you can uh, describe that uh, the weather is uh, it's hot or it's cold, etc. Now we're going to learn how to describe the foreground. As I told you earlier, divide the picture in your mind into two sections, the background and the foreground. So when we're describing the foreground, you will notice that's where all the action takes place. Now we need to use the following key phrase there. Au premier plan, on aperçoit. I repeat. Au premier plan, on aperçoit, which means in the foreground, one notices. So whatever you see in the foreground, that needs to be described in great detail using a variety of adjectives. Here we are going to describe it. There are people, you are going to describe each and every individual that we can see, the clothes that they are wearing, how do they look, are they happy, are they feeling excited, are they crying, are they feeling sad, etc. So all those you need to observe every part of that person's uh, body, their face, their clothes, etc. And describe them uh, using, uh, starting with your line will be like this. Au premier plan, on aperçoit uh, des personnes and then describing uh, il y a une jeune fille, uh, elle porte whatever, whatever she's wearing and you will go on like that. Now we come to the last W that is who. Who is in the picture? When we are describing the particular picture, this is one of the most important W's that we need to describe. So, qui est dans l'image? So, you will use the following key phrases to start off. The phrase I want you to note down is en remarque. En remarque means one notices. What does one notice? So, you can notice if they are all tourists. So, on remarque, uh, the tourists. On remarque, the gens d'un certain age, people of a certain age. On remarque, the passants, one notices passerbys. On remarque, uh, the jeunes enfants, we see or one notices young children. So, whatever you, dis whatever you can see, use that along with on remarque. Also, the other two phrases that you can use are à droite il y a and à gauche il y a. À droite is to, now in the, in the foreground, on the right side, you can say à droite il y a une jeune fille. Uh, in the left, il y a un, un garçon. So, looking at the position of the people, you can use à droite and uh, à gauche along with ilia. So, à droite ilia and à gauche ilia. When we have to describe a person, we have to describe the physical structure of that person. In that, we will tell whether we will be able to write whether the person is tall or short, fat or thin, and uh, what kind of hair does that person have. So, those adjectives need to be revised and used. So, some of them are grand. Grand for a female, uh, petit and petite, uh, chauve. Chauve is for a bald person, so il est chauve. And uh, if you are if you're describing the hair of a girl or for a boy also, so elle a des cheveux long et red. Long tells the length, red is straight, and uh, cheveux court is short hair. A shabakut and a frise. Frise is an adjective which says curly. 
So use these adjectives according to what the person looks like. So a description of a person should include his, uh, uh, how, how he looks in sense tall, short, fat, thin, etc. But also mention his hair, whether the person has long hair or short hair. If the person has a ponytail, then this is a good uh, structure to use. Uh, Yunke the cheval. Yunke the cheval is a ponytail. So, L.A. Yunke the cheval. She has a ponytail. Or L.A. the cheval long a red. She has long straight hair. Uh, L.A. the cheval court a frise. She has short and curly hair. So, these adjectives, uh, they, they describe the person in detail and uh, of course get you better marks. Now we have described the person physically. Now we have to go on to describing what they are wearing. After all, we have 200 words to write. Hmm? So how do we describe the clothes of the people? The word that we are going to use is the verb porte. A very easy verb. It's an ER verb. So you should know the conjugation of it. Now, obviously you are not going to say as je porte or tu porte. You're going to be writing it in the third person. So at least il singular, l singular port and il plural and l plural port. That conjugation you should know. All right. So il l port or il l plural port. Uh, what kind of clothes are they? Des vêtements légers. Light clothes. Let's say it's a summer scene. Elle porte des vêtements légers. Elle porte des costumes traditionnels. They're wearing traditional clothes. So you have a picture of, let's say, a, a person in uh, Indian clothes, a sari, a dhoti, etc. So they're wearing the costume traditionnel. Il ou elle porte des tenues décontractées. Des tenues décontractées means casual clothes. So it depends what the person is wearing in the picture. According to that, write down. You can even mention specific uh, details. For example, Elle porte une jupe, elle porte un manteau, uh, elle porte des vêtements d'hiver, il, il porte des gants, il porte des bottes, etc. So, learn up all your vocabulary related to the clothes, the different uh, clothes for the summer, the clothes that we use in winter. Uh, also, go for accessories like parapluie, that is umbrella, and uh, parasol, if it's a sun umbrella, etc. Go over those vocabulary as well so that you can uh, describe the scenery as well as the person. We also need to describe the appearance of a person. What does he appear like? Does he look happy? Does he look sad? So for that we need to use the uh, phrase avoir plus l'air plus an adjective. So il ou elle a l'air plus an adjective. So il a l'air ennuyeux. He looks bored. Elle a l'air contente. She seems happy. So using avoir plus l'air plus an adjective, not only is it an impressive structure, uh, but using again an adjective in a different manner uh, gets you higher marks. Now we need to end our text. We finish the what, the where, the when, the who. We describe them. Now we need to end it. So we need to end it in a very uh, effective manner at the same time. Uh, ensuring that we continue to get higher marks for this particular 20 marker. So for this, I need you to remember these two uh, phrases that need to be used in the last lines. The first one is l'ambiance semble être plus an adjective. So you're describing the, uh, the, the basic, uh, the feel of the picture. What is the ambiance of the picture? Does it, is it a happy picture? Is it a tension filled picture is it it's a it's a picture that makes you feel sad it's a picture that makes you feel happy so those are the uh, feelings that need to come out in your these last lines so for that the line that we're going to use is l'ambiance semble être plus an adjective so i've written down two adjectives here joyeuse that is joyful tendu which is tense so if the picture is a joyful scene, then you can write down la ambiance et semble être joyeuse. Uh, if it is a, a scene which is, let's say, about a sports scene or a, 
or a fair, etc., then those, uh, this adjective can be very effectively used. Uh, also, uh, we need to write the next line. What does, it, what does it help us to think? What do we make out of it? How does it affect us personally? So here we are going to use like l'image nous a nous invite à réfléchir. L'image nous invite à réfléchir. So the picture invites us to think upon, to reflect upon. And then what do we want to reflect upon? So let's say if you have a picture of uh, a family together laughing. So what do we say? La image uh, nous invite à réfléchir. Um, uh, au bienfait de la famille, or the benefits of being together, the au bienfait uh, d'être ensemble, to be together. Or if it's a sports uh, scene, uh, au bienfait de la santé, au bienfait du sport, on the benefits of sports. So all this can be used, uh, whatever, the, whatever is the theme of the picture, according to that you can use it. But please note down, these two lines are extremely important and should be used in your ending lines. L'ambiance semble être, so to describe the general feel of the picture, and uh, l'image nous invite à réfléchir, invites us to think or makes us think. Time for a super tip. Tip number one use a negative when describing a person. For example, you see a picture, the girl has long hair, she's wearing a dress, so what are we going to do? We're going to say, okay, elle a des cheveux longs, and then we add a negative. Elle ne porte pas de lunettes, and she's not wearing any glasses because we don't see any glasses on her face. So you adding, uh, you add a negative, it it uh, it gets you higher marks. Tip number two: use adjectives with every noun. So every noun that you're going to use, whether to describe a person or the area or whatever they're doing, use a noun, with, uh, use an adjective with it. For example, uh, il y a des champs, there are fields. But then if you add an adjective, a color adjective, il y a des champs verts, there are green fields. It's acceptable and you get higher marks. Similarly, uh, the girl is wearing a dress. If you just write on uh, la, la, la fille porte uh, in uh, robe, she's wearing a dress. Okay, fine, good. But if you say la fille uh, porte in uh, robe elegante, better, higher marks. Is Certain important verbs that we need to keep in mind uh, and which need to be learned in the third person singular and plural forms are the verb porte because we will be describing people so what they're wearing so learn how to conjugate it in the third person singular both masculine or feminine forms tenir which means to hold if they are holding something in their hand so il tient il tien s'asseoir to be seated so he is seated il sont assis il est assis être debout to be standing so these would help us uh, to describe the picture better Porte, tenir, s'asseoir, and être debout. To summarize, remember, this is what we need to do. What do we need to describe? Where does it take place? What is there in the background? Describe the people and place in detail. Describe the activities. Use a lot of adjectives. And how do we do that? By using keywords, using the present tense, check and recheck a model question. Faites une description de l'image donnée ci-dessous ou décrivez ce que elle vous suggère. Have a look at this picture. See it in detail. Observe it carefully. See what all is there in the background, in the foreground. What all do you see? And write a small uh, 200 word redaction for me. You can put it in the comment section and I would love to have a look at it and uh, improve upon it if needed. Hope to hear from you soon. Au revoir.